Yeah. I'm going to stay up here today. These are these are long, so I'm going to read them from up here. Mr. Williams, can you, I may need to show the verdict forms on that overhead if you can, I won't need it until I get towards the end. You want me to have Mr. Altman do it, George? You want me to have Mr. Altman do it? Yeah. It could, it could take until the end, right? <laughs> you know, there is going to be a time in your life when you're going to be Mr. Altman's age or my age and there's going to be young people in here. I won't make it that far. That'll be the uh, retina scans. As I say, it's going to be a bit. I've got to get through all the other sure, instructions sure. first. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have, are we waiting anybody from the state? Is Mr. Ashton coming back or can we go forward with the jury We're okay? We're good. And uh, Mr. Okafer is present and his street clothes and all counsel are here. Okay to go forward from the defense standpoint? Okay, all right. It's just the jury instructions. Okay, let's bring them in if you would please, if, if they're done. Well, they can, they can come in until we get started. Well, Okay. Will you hang, hang on a minute? Will you let Jeff know? Yes, sir. Regarding what? <laughs> regarding alternate jurors. Yes. Are you familiar with that? Yes, sir. Okay. That's I have an instruction. I'm going to give them. Okay. Then we're fine. But thank you for reminding me. Okay, <clears throat> Jeff, go ahead. <clears throat> Jeff just went back in. All right, I'm very better. Please be seated. This is one of those occasions where I don't have to ask you about the questions I normally ask when you come back from the lunch hour since you were contained. Um, I am going to go over some jury instructions with you. You heard some of them mentioned. Uh, these are extremely important. I've talked to you about taking notes if you want. They are important enough that instead of you taking notes, we are going to give you a copy. And Jeff is going to hand you a copy right now. As he's handing these out to you, you'll each have your own copy. Uh, you, may, you have two options available. You can either just lay them on your lap and uh, listen to what I'm telling you, or you can follow along. There's not a third option, and I forgot to tell a jury that one time, and I had all 12 jurors reading out loud with me. It felt like we were at a universal reading contest or something. But, so that's not an option, but you can feel free to either follow along or you feel free to uh, simply leave them on your lap and just listen. There should be one for everybody. Okay, very good. I'll remind you there's some shawls up here if anybody needs them also. Members of the jury, I thank you for your attention during this trial. Please pay attention to the instructions I'm about to give you. Bessemer Okafer, a defendant in this case, has been accused of crimes of first-degree murder, which is count one of the indictment, two counts of attempted first-degree murder, which are counts two and three of the indictment, and armed burglary of a dwelling, which is count four of the indictment. <clears throat> in this case, Bessemer Okafer is accused of first-degree murder. Murder in the first degree includes the lesser crimes of murder in the second degree and manslaughter, all of which are uh, unlawful. 
a killing that is excusable or was committed by the use of justifiable deadly force is lawful. If you find Alex Zaldivar was killed by Bessemer Okafor, you will then consider the circumstances surrounding the killing in deciding if the killing was first degree murder or was murder in the second degree or manslaughter or whether the killing was excusable or resulted, fi resulted from justifiable use of deadly force. The killing of a human being is justifiable homicide and lawful if necessarily done while resisting an attempt to murder or commit a felony upon the defendant or to commit a felony in any way, any dwelling house in which the defendant was at the time of the killing. The killing of a human being is excusable and therefore lawful under any one of the following three circumstances. One, when the killing is committed by accident and misfortune in doing any lawful act by lawful beings with usual ordinary caution and without any unlawful intent. Or, when the killing occurs by accident and misfortune in the heat of passion upon any sudden and sufficient provocation. Or, three, when the killing is committed by accident and misfortune resulting from a sudden combat if a dangerous weapon is not used and the killing is not done in a cruel or unusual manner. A dangerous weapon is any weapon that taking into account the manner in which it is used is likely to produce death or great bodily harm. I now instruct you on the circumstances that must be proved before Bessemer Okafor and Bessemer Okafor may be found guilty of first degree murder or any lesser included crime. There are two ways in which a person may be convicted of first degree murder. One is known as premeditated murder and the other is known as felony murder. To prove the crime of first degree premeditated murder as to defendant Bessemer Okafor, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Alex Zaldivar is dead. Number two, the death was caused by the criminal act of Bessemer Okafor. Number three, there was a premeditated killing of Alex Zaldivar. An act includes a series of related actions arising from and performed pursuant to a single design or purpose. Premeditated killing is killing after consciously deciding to do so. The decision must be present in the mind at the time of the killing. The law does not fix the exact period of time that must pass between the formation of the premeditated intent to kill and the killing. The period of time must be long enough to allow reflection by the defendant. The premeditated intent to kill must be formed before the killing. The question of premeditation is a question of fact to be determined by you from the evidence. It will be sufficient proof of premeditation if the circumstances of the killing and the conduct of the, of the accused convince you beyond a reasonable doubt of the existence of premeditation at the time of the killing. If a person has a premeditated design to kill one person and in attempting to kill that person actually kills another person, the killing is premeditated. To prove the crime of first degree felony murder as to defendant Bessemer Okafor, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Alex Zaldivar is dead. Number two, while engaged in the commission of burglary, the defendant caused a death of Alex Zaldivar. Three, A, Bessemer Okafor was the person who actually killed Alex Zaldivar, or Alex Zaldivar was killed by a person other than Bessemer Okafor, but both Bessemer Okafor and the person who killed Alex Zaldivar were principals in the commission of burglary. In order to convict the defendant of first degree felony murder, it is not necessary for the state to prove that the defendant had a premeditated design or intent to kill. To prove the crime of burglary as to defendant Bessemer Okafor, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Bessemer Okafor entered a structure owned by or in the possession of Alex Zaldivar, Brianna Campos, and Remington Campos. Two, at the time of entering the structure, Bessemer Okafor had the intent to commit an offense other than burglary or trespass in that structure. 
It is alleged that Bessemer Okafor had the intent to commit any of the following offenses in the structure. First degree premeditated murder or any lesser included offense, attempted first degree murder or any lesser included offense, or assault or battery. All of these offenses are defined elsewhere in these instructions. The intent with which an act is done is an operation of the mind and therefore is not always capable of direct and positive proof. It may be established by circumstantial evidence like any other fact in a case. Even though, a unlawful entering, even though an unlawful entering a structure is proved, if the evidence does not establish that it was done with the intent to commit an offense other than burglary or trespass, the defendant must be found not guilty of burglary. Structure means any building of any kind, either temporary or permanent, that has a roof over it and the enclosed space of ground and outbuildings immediately surrounding the structure. If the defendant helped another person or persons commit or attempt to commit a crime, the defendant is a principal and must be treated as if, as if he has done all the things the other person or persons did if, one, the defendant has a, had a conscious intent that the criminal act be done, and two, the defendant did some act or said some word which was intended to or which did incite, cause, encourage, assist, or advise the other person or persons to actually commit or attempt to commit the crime. To be a principal, the defendant does not have to be present when the crime is committed or attempted. If you find that the crime of first degree premeditated murder has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, it is not necessary for you to consider whether the crime of first degree felony murder has also been proven. On the other hand, if you find that first degree premeditated murder has not been proven, you should then consider whether the state has proven the crime of first degree felony murder. First degree felony murder and burglary are linked in that burglary is an essential element of a first degree felony murder. In your consideration of first degree murder, first degree felony murder, you should first consider the evidence applicable to burglary. If you find that the crime of burglary has not been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, the defendant cannot be guilty of first degree felony murder. If on the other hand, you find that the crime of burglary has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, you should then consider the evidence applicable to first degree felony murder. A guilty verdict as to burglary does not require a guilty verdict as to first degree felony murder. You should find the defendant guilty of degree felony murder only if you find all of the elements of that crime, including the essential elements contained in burglary, were proven beyond a reasonable doubt. To prove the crime of attempted first degree premeditated murder as to defendant Vesemann Okafor, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Vesemann Okafor did some act intended to cause the death of Brianna Campos that went beyond just thinking or talking about it. Number two, Bessemer Okafor acted with a premeditated design to kill Brianna Campos. Number three, the act would have resulted in the death of Brianna Campos, except that someone prevented Bessemer Okafor from killing Brianna Campos, or he failed to do so. A premeditated design to kill means that there was a conscious decision to kill. The decision must be present in the mind at the time the act was committed. The law does not fix the exact period of time that must pass between the formation of the premeditated intent to kill and the act. The period of time must be long enough to allow reflection by the defendant. The premeditated intent to kill must be formed before the act was committed. The question of premeditation is a question of fact to be determined by you from the evidence. It will be sufficient proof of premeditation if the circumstances of the attempted killing and the conduct of the accused convince you beyond a reasonable doubt of the existence of premeditation at the time of the attempted killing. It is not an attempt to commit first degree premeditated murder if the defendant abandoned the attempt to commit the offense or otherwise prevented its commission 
under circumstances indicating a complete and voluntary renunciation of his criminal purpose. This is attempted first degree murder premeditated with regard to count three. To prove the crime of attempted first degree premeditated murder as to defendant Bessema Oakford, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Bessema and Oakford did some act intended to cause the death of Remington Campos that went beyond just thinking or talking about it. Number two, Bessem and Okafer acted with a premeditated design to kill Remington Campos. Number three, the act would have resulted in the death of Remington Campos, except that someone prevented Bessem and Okafer from killing Remington Campos, or he failed to do so. A premeditated design to kill means that there was a conscious decision to kill. The decision must be present in the mind at the time the act was committed. The law does not fix the exact period of time that must pass between the formation of the premeditated intent to kill and the act. The period of time must be long enough to allow reflection by the defendant. The premeditated intent to kill must be formed before the act was committed. The question of premeditation is a question of fact to be determined by you from the evidence. It will be sufficient proof of premeditation if the circumstances of the attempted killing and the conduct of the accused convince you beyond a reasonable doubt of the existence of premeditation at the time of the attempted killing. It is not an attempt to commit first degree premeditated murder if the defendant abandoned the attempt to commit the offense or otherwise prevented its commission under circumstances ending a complete and voluntary renunciation of his criminal, criminal purpose. As to count for burglary, to prove the crime of burglary as to Bessemon Okafer, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Bessemon Okafer entered a structure owned by or in the possession of Alex Zaldivar, Brianna Campos, and Remington Campos. Number two, at the time of entering the structure, Bessemon Okafer had the intent to commit an offense other than burglary or trespass in that structure. It is alleged that Bessem and Okafer had the intent to commit any of the following offenses in the structure. First degree premeditated murder, or any lesser included offense. Attempted first degree murder, or any lesser included offense. Or assault or battery. All of those offenses are defined elsewhere in these instructions. The intent with which an act is done is an operation of the mind and therefore is not always capable of direct and positive proof. It may be established by circumstantial evidence like any other facts in the case. Even though an unlawful entering a structure is proved, if the evidence does not establish that it was done with the intent to commit an offense other than burglary or trespass, the defendant must be found not guilty of burglary. Structure means any building of any kind, either temporary or permanent, that has a roof over it in the enclosed space of ground and outbuildings immediately surrounding the structure. If you find defendant <coughs> Bessemer and Okafer guilty of burglary, you must also determine if the state had proved beyond a reasonable doubt whether in the course of committing the burglary the defendant committed an assault or battery upon any person. An assault is an intentional and unlawful threat either by word or act to do violence to another at, the, at a time when the defendant appeared to have an ability to carry out the threat and his act created a well-founded fear in the other person that the violence was about to take place. A battery is an actual and intentional touching or striking of another person against the person's will or the intentional causing of bodily harm to another person. If you find defendant Bessman Okafer guilty of burglary you must also determine if the state have proved beyond a reasonable doubt whether in the course of committing the burglary the defendant was armed or armed himself within the structure with a dangerous weapon. A dangerous weapon is any weapon that, taking into account the manner in which it is used, is likely to produce death or great bodily harm. It is not necessary for the state to prove that the defendant intended to use or was willing to use the weapon in the furtherance of the burglary in order for a weapon to constitute a dangerous weapon. 
to arm oneself during the course of a burglary includes possessing a firearm, whether loaded with ammunition or not, at any time during the course of committing the burglary. If you find the defendant, Bessemer Okafer, guilty of burglary, you must also determine if the state have proved beyond a reasonable doubt whether the structure entered was a dwelling. Dwelling means a building of any kind, whether such building is temporary or permanent, mobile or immobile, which has a roof over it and is designed to be occupied by people lodging therein at night, together with the enclosed space of ground and outbuildings immediately surrounding it. For purposes of a burglary, a dwelling includes an attached porch or attached garage. If the defendant helped another person or persons commit or attempt to commit a crime, the defendant is a principal and must be treated as if he has done all the things the other person or persons did if, one, the <coughs> defendant has a conscious intent that the criminal act be done, and two, the defendant did some act or said some word which was intended to and which did incite, cause, encourage, assist, or advise the other person or persons to actually commit or attempt to commit the crime. To be a principal, the defendant does not have to be present when the crime is committed. In considering the evidence, you should consider the possibility that although the evidence may not convince you that the defendant committed the main crimes of which they are accused, there may be evidence that they committed other acts that would constitute a lesser included crimes. Therefore, if you decide that the main accusation has not been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, you will next need to decide if the defendant is guilty of any lesser included crime. The lesser crimes uh, indicated in the definition of first degree murder are second degree murder and manslaughter. The lesser crimes included in the definition of attempted first degree murder are attempted second degree murder and attempted manslaughter by act. As to count one, to prove the crime of second-degree murder as to defendant Bessemer Okafer, the state must prove the following three elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Alex Zaldivar is dead. Number two, the death was caused by the criminal act of Bessemer Okafer. Number three, there was an unlawful killing of Alex Zaldivar by an act imminently dangerous to another and demonstrating a depraved mind without regard for human life. An act includes a series of related acts arising from and performed pursuant to a single design or purpose. An act is imminently dangerous to another and demonstrating a depraved mind if it is an act or series of acts that one, a person of ordinary judgment would know is reasonably certain to kill or do serious injury to another and two, is done with ill will, hatred, spite or evil intent, and three, is of such a nature that the act itself indicates an indifference to human life. In order to convict of second degree murder, it is not necessary for the state to prove the defendant had an intent to cause death. As to count one, manslaughter. To prove the crime of manslaughter, as to defendant Bessemer Okafer, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. One, Alex Zaldivar is dead. Two, A, Bessemer Okafer intentionally committed an act or acts that caused the death of Alex Zaldivar. Or, B, Bess Okafer intentionally procured an act that caused the death of Alex Zaldivar. The defendant cannot be guilty of manslaughter by committing a merely negligent act or if the killing was either justified or excusable homicide. Each of us has a duty to act reasonably towards others. If there is a violation of that duty without any, any conscious intention to harm, that violation is negligence. The killing of a human being is justifiable homicide and lawful if it necessarily done while resisting an attempt to murder or commit a felony upon the defendant or to commit a felony in any dwelling house in which the defendant was at the time of the killing. The killing of a human being is excusable and therefore lawful under any of the following three circumstances. Number one, when the killing is committed by accident and misfortune in doing some lawful act by lawful means with usual ordinary caution and without any unlawful intent. Or two, 
When the killing occurs by accident and misfortune, in the heat of passion, upon any sudden and sufficient provocation, or three, when the killing is committed by accident and misfortune resulting from any sudden combat, if a dangerous weapon is not used and the killing is not done in a cruel or unusual manner. In order to, con to convict of manslaughter by act, it is not necessary for the state to prove the defendant had an intent to cause death, only an intent to commit an act that was not merely negligent, justified, or excusable, and which caused death. To procure means to persuade, induce, prevail upon, or cause a person to do something. Dangerous weapon is any weapon that, taking into account the manner in which it is used, is likely to produce death or great bodily harm. As to counts two and three, attempted second degree murder. To prove the crime of attempted second degree murder as to defendant Bessemer Okafer, the state must prove the following two elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Number one, Bessemer Okafer intentionally committed an act which would have resulted in the death of Brianna Campos in count two or Remington Campos in count three, except that someone prevented Bessemer Okafer from killing Brianna Campos or Remington Campos, or he failed to do so. Number two, the act was imminently dangerous to another and demonstrated a depraved mind without regard for human life. An act includes a series of related actions arising from and performed pursuant to a single design or purpose. The act is imminently danger to another, dangerous to another and demonstrating a depraved mind if it is an act or series of acts that, number one, a person of ordinary judgment would know is reasonably certain to kill or do seriously injury to another, and two, is done with ill will, hatred, spite, or an evil intent, and three, is of such a nature that the act itself indicates an indifference to human life. In order to convict of attempted second-degree murder, it is not necessary for the state to prove the defendant had an intent to cause death. It is not an attempt to commit second-degree murder if the defendant abandoned the attempt to commit the offense or otherwise prevented its commission under circumstances indi indicating a complete and voluntary renunciation of the criminal purpose. Attempted manslaughter by act as to counts two and count three. To prove the crime of attempted manslaughter by act as to defendant Bessemer Okafer, the state must prove the following element beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendant intentionally committed an act or procured the commission of an act which would have resulted in the death of Brianna Campos in count two or Remington Campos in count three, except that someone prevented the defendant from killing Brianna Campos or Remington Campos or he failed to do so. However, the defendant cannot be guilty of attempted manslaughter by act by committing a merely negligent act. Each of us has a duty to act reasonably and use ordinary care towards others. If there is a violation of that duty without any conscious intent to harm, that violation is negligence. It is not an attempt to commit manslaughter if the defendant abandoned the attempt to commit the offense or otherwise prevented its commission under circumstances indicating a complete and voluntary renunciation of his criminal purpose. To procure means to persuade, induce, prevail upon, or cause a person to do something. In order to convict of attempted manslaughter by act, it is not necessary for the state to prove that the defendant had an intent to cause death, only an intent to commit an act which would have caused death and was not justifiable or excusable attempted excusable attempted homicide, as I have previously explained those terms. <coughs> Excuse me a minute. The defendant has entered a plea of not guilty. This means you must presume or believe the defendant is innocent. The presumption stays with the defendant as to each material allegation in the indictment through each stage of the trial unless it has been overcome by the evidence to the exclusion of and beyond a reasonable doubt. To overcome the defendant's presumption of innocence, the state has the burden of proving the crime with which the defendant is charged, was committed, and the defendant is the person who committed the crime. 
the defendant is not required to present evidence or prove anything. Whenever the words reasonable doubt is used, you must consider the following. A reasonable doubt is not a mere possible doubt, a speculative, imaginary, or forced doubt. Such a doubt must not influence you to return a verdict of not guilty if you have an abiding conviction of guilt. On the other hand, if after carefully considering, comparing, and weighing all of the evidence, there is not an abiding conviction of guilt, or if having a conviction, is, it is one which is not stable, but one which wavers and vacillates, then the charge is not proved beyond every reasonable doubt, and you must find the defendant not guilty because the doubt is reasonable. It is to the evidence introduced in this trial, and to it alone, that you are to look for that proof. A reasonable doubt as to the guilt of the defendants, defendant may arise from the evidence, conflict in the evidence, or lack of evidence. If you have a reasonable doubt, you should find the defendant not guilty. If you have no reasonable doubt, you should find the defendant guilty. It is up to you to decide what evidence is reliable. You should use your common sense in deciding which is the best evidence and which evidence should not be relied upon in considering your verdict. You may find some of the evidence not reliable or less reliable than other evidence. You should consider how the witnesses acted as well as what they said. Some things you should consider are, number one, did the witness seem to have an opportunity to see and know the things about which the witness testified? Number two, did the witness seem to have an accurate memory? Number three, was the witness honest and straightforward in answering the attorney's questions? Number four, did the witness have some interest in how the case should be decided? Number five, does the witness's testimony agree with other testimony and other evidence in the case? Number six, has the witness been offered or received any money, preferred treatment, or other benefit in order to get the witness to testify? Number seven, had any pressure or threat been used against the witness that affected the truth of the witness's testimony? Number eight, did the witness at some other time make a statement that is inconsistent with the testimony he or she gave in court? Whether the state has met its burden of proof does not depend upon the number of witness it has called or upon the number of exhibits it has offered, but instead upon the nature and quality of the evidence presented. The fact that a witness is employed by a law enforcement does not mean that his or her testimony deserves more or less consideration than that of any other witness. Expert witnesses are like other witnesses, with one exception. The law permits an expert witness to give his or her opinion. However, an expert opinion is re <coughs> reliable only when given on a subject about which you believe him or her to be an expert. Like other witnesses, you may believe or disbelieve all or any part of an expert's testimony. You must consider the testimony you must consider the testimony of some witnesses with more caution than others. For example, a witness who claims to have helped the defendant commit a crime, has been promised immunity from prosecution, hopes to gain more favorable treatment if his or her own in his or her own case may have a reason to make false statement in order to strike a good bargain with the state. This is particularly true when there is no other evidence tending to agree with what the witness says about the defendant. So, while a witness of that kind may be entirely truthful when testifying, you should consider his or her testimony with more caution than the testimony of other witnesses. However, if the testimony of such a witness convinces you beyond a reasonable doubt of the defendant's guilt, or the other evidence in the case does so, then you should find the defendant guilty. It is entirely proper for a lawyer to talk to a witness about what testimony the witness would give if called to the courtroom. The witness should not be discredited by talking to a lawyer about his or her testimony. You may rely upon your own conclusion about the credibility of any witness. A juror may believe or disbelieve all or any part of the evidence or the testimony of any witness. The Constitution requires the state to prove its accusations against the defendant. It is not necessary for the defendant to prove anything, nor is the defendant required to prove his innocence. It's up to the state to prove the defendant's guilt by the evidence. The defendant exercised a fundamental right by choosing not to be a witness in this case. You must not view this as an admission of guilt or be influenced in any way by his decision. 
No juror should ever be concerned that the defendant did or did not take the witness stand to give testimony in a case. A statement claimed to have been made by the defendant outside of court has been placed before you. Such a statement should always be considered with caution and be weighed with great care to make certain it was freely and voluntarily given. Therefore, you must determine from the evidence that the defendant's alleged statement was knowingly, voluntarily, and freely made. In making this determination, you should consider the total circumstances, including but not limited to, number one, whether when the defendant made the statement, he had been treated, uh, threatened in order to get him to make it, and two, whether anyone had promised him anything in order to get him to make it. If you conclude the defendant's out-of-court statement was not freely and voluntarily given, or not voluntarily made, you should disregard it. You have heard testimony of eyewitness identification. In deciding how much weight to give to this testimony, you may consider the various factors mentioned in these instructions concerning the credibility of a witness. In addition to those factors, in evaluating eyewitness identification testimony, you may also consider, number one, the capacity and opportunity of the witness to observe the offender based upon the length of time for observation and the conditions at the time of observation, including lighting and distance. Two, whether the identification was the product of an eyewitness's own recollection or was the result of influence or suggestiveness. Number three, the circumstances under which the defendant was presented to the eyewitness for identification. Number four, any inconsistent identification made by the eyewitness. Number five, any instance in which the eyewitness did not make an identification when given the opportunity to do so. Number six, the witness's familiarity with the subject identified. Number seven, lapse of time between the event and the identification. Number eight, whether the eyewitness and the offender are of different races or ethnic groups and whether this may have affected the accuracy of the identification. And number nine, the totality of circumstances surrounding the eyewitness's identification. There are some general rules that apply to your discussions. You must follow these rules in order to return a lawful verdict. Number one, you must follow the law as is set out in these instructions. If you fail to follow the law, your verdict will be a miscarriage of justice. There is no reason for failing to follow the law in this case. All of us are depending upon you to make a wise and legal decision in this matter. Number two, this case must be decided only upon the evidence that you have heard from the testimony of the witnesses and have seen in the form of exhibits and evidence and these instructions. Number three, this case must not be decided for or against anyone because you feel sorry for anyone or are angry at anyone. Number four, remember the lawyers are not on trial. Your feelings about them should not influence your decision in this case. Number five, your duty is to determine if the defendant has been proven guilty or not in accord with the law. It is the judge's job to determine a proper sentence if the defendant is found guilty. Number six, whatever verdict you render must be unanimous. That is, each juror must agree to the same verdict. Number seven, your verdict should not be influenced by feelings of prejudice, bias, or sympathy. Your verdict must be based on the evidence and on the law contained in these instructions. Deciding a verdict is exclusively your job. I cannot participate in that decision in any way. Please disregard anything I may have said or done that made you think I prefer one verdict over another. You may find the defendant guilty as charged in the indictment, or guilty of such lesser included crimes as the evidence may justify, or not guilty. If you return a verdict of guilty, it should be for the highest offense which has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. If you find that no offense has been proven, or proven beyond a reasonable doubt, then of course your verdict must be not guilty. Only one verdict may be returned as to each crime charged. The verdict must be unanimous, that is all of you must agree to the same verdict. <coughs> the verdict must be in writing, and for your convenience, the necessary forms of the verdict have been prepared for you. I'm going to go over those verdict forms with you right now. Do we have that machine on?
where's the um, that's what I gotta find. Okay. Folks, this is a copy of the verdict form. I'm going to move it. It is not complicated. And I want to show the way you set up for it because there's four different ones. And I'm going to show you each of those, but you'll find they're set up the same way. It's the central body that's a little bit different. If you look at this in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see the court, the case number, the division, and the charge. This one's count one, first degree murder. The left side is the name of the case. On the top, it says verdict as to count one. It's count one as to Alex Zaldivar. That's telling you this is count one of the indictment. Remember, there's four different charges. Each one must be given your individual attention. Each one is separate. And that's why they're different verdict forms. If you read the way it's set up, there are a list of questions or statements there. You have to agree on the one, and that would be checked off. The first one reads, we the jury find the defendant guilty of first degree murder as charged in the indictment. If that is the unanimous verdict, you would check that off. Second one, we the jury find the defendant guilty of the lesser included offense of second degree murder. If that is the jury's verdict, you would check that off. Third is we the jury find the defendant guilty of lesser included offense of manslaughter. If that is your verdict, you would check that off. Last one, we the jury find the defendant not guilty. If that is your verdict, you would check that off. And again, it would be dated by the foreperson and as you see, signed by the foreperson. You see terms in there such as second degree murder, manslaughter. That's what those jury instructions are that you have on your lap that I went over. If you can't remember, go back to those instructions. That's what they're there for. That's count one. Your separate and individual attention needs to be as to each one. The second one is set up exactly the same way. Name of the court, name of the case, but if you look under charge, this deals with count two, uh, attempted first degree murder. And if you look at the top where it says verdict, this is count two as to Brianna Campos. So you know the charge that we're talking about. It is the same exact situation. I want to go over it with you. First line, we the jury find the defendant guilty of attempted first degree murder as charged.